Hello there. Debian and I have a long list of years uh, together, right? We, I mean, we, I have experience with Debian a lot, and it's generally been a good overall experience both for servers and for desktop. And in the recent years, it, and especially with version 12, it has come very close to being kind of my perfect desktop solution. But I have some complaints, right? I mean, the fact that this is a stable distribution, and by stable I am quoting because th in this case it means frozen packages, right? Uh, I, I have some complaints. For example, Firefox, they have decided, uh, and I think this is a good decision, that they are going to stick with version uh, 1.15, uh, the long-term support one. And it's a, it's a good decision, right? If they don't want to tinker with that, they can stick with it for two years. If you really need a newer one, you can fetch it from Flatpak or something like that. Uh, but generally, you don't really need a newer version of Firefox. And whenever uh, the new version of Firefox releases, then the long-term support version gets uh, a minor version bump and Debian absorbs this into a book form. And this is good. This is perfect. I like it. Uh, but this cannot be said uh, for KDE Plasma. Uh, <clears throat> you know, when I started using Debian 12, I uh, decided to switch to Plasma and to majority of the KDE applications that I can use without sacrificing some of my GNOME or GTK functionality that I enjoy in better applications, right? So uh, they have picked version 5.27, I think it is. Uh, this is a long-term support plasma. This is also a good solution. I like this. Uh, I like the decision that Debian made here. Uh, but what they didn't do is that they are not absorbing the patches that uh, KD people are doing, right? So I have been stuck with uh, version 5.27.5, I believe. And this version has bugs. I can see them. I, I have discovered bugs on my own because they are some of the obvious ones. For example, the um, application for installing packages, uh, it's displaying uh, the update to new uh, versions of applications in, a, in the upside down manner. For example, it's saying that it's going to update my, I don't know, um, evolution from a higher version to lower version when the update comes. And it does this for every application that's listed uh, on the KD Discover, right? It's, it's, it's upside down. It's a small bug, but it's, it's hurting my eyes. Uh, it's fixed in the newer version of Plasma and newer version of applications, but Debian is not absorbing these fixes for the LTS version of Plasma. So it's kind of pointless why they even picked the long-term support version if they are not long-term supporting it, if you know what I mean. This is one of the quirks I have. Also, I have been increasingly learning Emacs uh, for the past months and I need new functionalities of Emacs. So this is where Backports comes into play. So you can use newer version of uh, Debian packaged uh, Emacs uh, from Backports. This is fine. This, this works as intended, except that it has some uh, errors with iSpell. And I have not been able to find a solution to fix this unless I compile Emacs myself. But in that case, why do I even bother using Debian packages, right? I mean, if you're using your distribution to the very best of its abilities, then why compile stuff from scratch if you can just, if you can just use Linux from scratch in that case? I mean, I'm going too far away from here. I'm going too far ahead. But generally, the reasons why I stick to certain distribution is because this certain distribution does things in a way that I like. And right now Debian has some flaws that I think they uh, should improve on at least in the next release because sticking to long-term support versions of certain software, I think this is a good idea for Debian, for Debian stable. But in that case, they should import newer versions of long-term support 
packages and fixes like they're doing with Firefox. So I have been using Arch on this laptop for the past couple of weeks and this is my first time using Arch. Uh, and so far I have had good experiences with this. I have reinstalled it twice. So far first time I have installed everything to um, X4 partitions because that's just how I I'm used to and I have had never I have never had re a real reason to use any other file systems I have tried uh, other file system I have tried ZFS and better file system uh, and some others on my various Linux distributions but I have never felt any tangible reasons why I have been doing that except to try them out and see that they behave exactly the same for my basic desktop usage right uh, but with Arch I have had some experiences uh, by, well let's just say that I have been experimenting uh, what can I do with this operating system. And of course this has led me uh, to a um, place where I'm no longer certain in my own operating system that I can revert it back to where it was. Uh, and it's a matter of trust because I have installed some uh, stuff that uh, I, I have just installed some scripts uh, that uh, have changed my operating system in a way that I wanted to see how other people have um, done it for the, for themselves. And I don't think this is a security risk, risk because this is just my uh, testing laptop. I don't have anything uh, on it, and nothing, nothing personal on it. So th this is this is like a testing ground. It's been an intentional. Uh, installation of let's see how other people do it and now in order to revert back the only thing I can do uh, is reinstall the operating system which is something that I have done yesterday and this was a great opportunity to use butter file system because now I need um, snapshots I want to be able to go back in time to previously before I tested something. And this is a great example of why you should use Butterfile system. If you have something like a, a rolling distribution, I think this is a um, really, really good case for snapshots. With Debian, I don't feel I like I need snapshots because they aren't really changing anything, anything substantial uh, and whatever they might break uh, in the long run, you can mitigate with backups because I really never ever had any breaking experiences with Debian. It, the base, uh, the core of the operating system, it just works. So the butter file system uh, snapshots abilities don't really apply to such a stable distribution, at least not in my opinion or Maybe if you're using it for server purpose, but that's another uh, case, right? So this is why I have reinstalled, reinstalled Arch on my testing laptop. Uh, this is why I have used uh, Butter file system. And this is why I'm going to install it on my main PC now, because I want to test some things. I want to test newer versions of drivers for Radeon. Well, basically I could do that uh, if, I if I would be using uh, Ubuntu. There are commercial versions, uh, if that's how they call it, uh, non-open non source version of AMD drivers, but they are also open source. So I I'm not sure what's the difference except being the newer uh, versions, that versions that you can patch with the um, LTS version of Ubuntu. But I'm not using Ubuntu, so these drivers are not very useful for me. Uh, I want to have the option of uh, using newer uh, kernels and yes, you can use the newer uh, kernel from backports in Debian uh, but this is kind of bleeding edge uh, and I want to test things more often on my main PC and I want to give Arch a chance to prove itself to me if this is something uh, that I could tolerate uh, in the long run because I have read a lot of uh, breakages uh, reported by various people on the internet but I cannot I cannot say that I really believe that Arch is that unstable as some people claim it to be because if you know how to use your operating system then basically the operating system should not fall apart on its own 
unless you allow it to fall apart, if I can put it that way, and snapshots uh, can keep it safe uh, uh, with one more layer uh, of um, safety security, if I can put it into the words like that. Also, I want to test new uh, version, versions of KDE Plasma, and I need Amex uh, to, well, th th this is this is a silly way to say, because um, most actual Emacs users, and by actual I mean people who have been using it for years. I, I'm a new Emacs user, so I'm just uh, finding my feet here still. So the the older, uh, the, the more experienced Emacs users usually tell me, I just compile it myself and be done with it. And this, this is perfectly fine, but I want to see how uh, things are done in Arch Linux. This is, I mean, this is a perfectly normal scenario for most of us Linux users. We distro hop, we we search for better ways to do things. So we search for uh, distributions which fit us more, uh, you know. Uh, and I still think that Debian is the way to go for me, but I think they should adjust some things just a little bit. For example, if you use um, FreeBSD as an example. Of course, it's not a Linux distribution, but they are doing something uh, in the right way, in my opinion, and that is that they have a very stable core which releases every couple of years, and they have package manager uh, like a separate system that feels like a rolling distribution. Uh, so in their case, you can have a stable base, um, together with uh, the m most of the time latest packages. Uh, as as I've heard, they lack some uh, manpower to maintain all of the packages to, to stay at the latest versions, but that's not the problem in the design of the operating system, but rather in the lack of uh, manpower, right? So Arch Linux has plenty of people who are working on it, and they have basically every package always up to date, bleeding edge. Uh, so all it comes down to how well are these people maintaining these packages and how well are they uh, taking care of things not breaking, right? So I'm just gonna uh, cut this video here and not making uh, not make it uh, a much longer topic than it needs to be. All I wanted to say is that I am in the need of testing something new and learning something new. So Arch has been um, a good companion for me. I have primarily been using this laptop for the past couple of weeks and only using my main PC for gaming and for making these videos and nothing else. Uh, so this this uh, multi-week experience has given me uh, enough food for thought and enough uh, introduction experience that i feel uh, i feel like uh, i'm ready to put it on my main pc and use this laptop for my next experience uh, for for my next experiment right uh, and for some more testing and right i'm going to see you in the next video bye